right, so these are all coming to you from a text called The American Frugal Housewife. It was published in 1832, nearly 200 years ago, by Mrs. Lydia Maria Child. Let's get right to it. Bones from which roasting pieces have been cut may be bought in the market for 10 or 12 cents, from which a very rich soup may be made besides skimming off fat for shortening. Yes, use every part of whatever you're getting. <laughs> Can't say I've made shortening from beef bones, but I have made my own chicken stock from boiling like a carcass of a Thanksgiving turkey. Also, I don't know if you've ever tried this, but keeping all of the grease left over when you cook bacon that stuff is amazing. All kinds of food that people typically throw away have great secondary use. Speaking of which, have all the good bits of vegetables and meat collected after dinner and diced before they are set away, that they may be ready to make mincemeat pies for supper or breakfast. I've talked about this in a former video. Not specifically mincemeat pies, but like having what I called magical transforming leftover meals, where you can like take bits and bobs from other dinners and put it together into something new so everyone's not complaining about having leftovers for the third time in a week. Baked beans are a very simple dish, yet few know how to cook them well. Yes, I know, I am one of them. Please don't take away my New Englander frugal lady card. I still can't get baked beans right. I've tried over and over. Thank goodness beans are so cheap, otherwise I would have stopped trying. They keep turning out weird every time. Someone teach me how to make baked beans. <laughs> I would ask, is it wise to risk your happiness in a foolish attempt to keep up with the opulent? Right, don't keep up with the Joneses. You used a bit more fancy language, but don't keep up with the Joneses. Yep, totally still relevant frugal advice. Got it. If any persons think some of these maxims too rigidly economical, aka your frugal living is a little too extreme for some people, let them ask how the largest fortunes among us have been made. I love this. So even back in 1832, people were still talking about basically the same thing about how Warren Buffett is a frugal dude and that's how he's a millionaire. Like, I love it. I love it. <laughs> the same advice. Ah, oh, it's so good. <laughs> even back then, people were saying that frugality could make you a millionaire. Amazing. People who have little to spend should partake sparingly of useless amusements. Those who are in debt should deny themselves entirely. Ooh. That's controversial. <laughs> I mean, if everyone in modern America followed that advice, like 77% of Americans would be on like the beans and rice plan. <laughs> I think Dave Ramsey calls this mindset like gazelle intensity, where like you focus so much on getting rid of all the debt you have that like, you know, you never see the inside of a restaurant unless you're the one working in there kind of a thing. You work like a dog until all your non-mortgage debt is gone. I mean. Honestly, it did work for our family. I've talked about that in a few former video too, about how we use Dave Ramsey's plan to get out of debt. But uh, should everyone be exactly like that? I don't know, especially if you have to do like years and years and years of work to get rid of all of your debt. Like, I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Those who never reserve a cent of their income with which to meet any unforeseen calamity Pay too dear for the whistle. I don't know what all this whistle business is about, but yes, you should have money set aside in an emergency fund for any of these like unforeseen calamities. Uh, really, really good advice, still relevant today. <laughs> Nothing should be thrown away so long as it is possible to make use of it, however trifling it may be. Okay, so the minimalists among you might disagree, and obviously like with how consumerist our society is nowadays, like uh, the math is a little bit different, but uh, I happen to like still having like little glass jars, little container of buttons around just in case I need them later. I don't go crazy, I'm not a hoarder, but I, I think this is still relevant advice. <laughs> those who have a little patch of ground will do well to raise the most important herbs, and those who have not will do well to get them in quantities from some friend in the country, for apothecaries make a very great profit upon them. Yeah, grow your own stuff if you can, and if you can't, buy it in bulk because people always like sell it at way higher prices for if you're just buying like a couple little bits of it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Let's move on. <laughs> it is wise to keep an exact account of all you spend, even for just a paper of pins. It makes you more careful in spending money. What? You mean like budgeting and having expense trackers is a good idea? Like, pff, shocker! Who would have guessed it? I am ignoring the part though where she says like the only reason you should be keeping track of all you spend is so your husband can double check your work and make sure you're like not spending too much because uh, having your husband have the final say in all spending is uh, less relevant advice for the modern person. <laughs> the man who is economical is laying up for himself the permanent power of being useful and generous. Yes, right. Isn't that what so many of us want? The reason we are frugal, the reason we're saving money and getting out of debt and trying to like 
be good financial stewards of our money is because we want to be able to bless people later. And like, we like, it doesn't it feel good? Like when you can take care of someone, when there's like a telethon and you can, you can help someone out, like that feels good. I love when I can be generous. That's one of my favorite things. Okay, so she's talking about like money saving tips here. Do not despise the following rules because they appear so unimportant. For many a little makes a mickle. Okay, first of all, that doesn't rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> if you're gonna have a little like pithy saying, it's at least got a rhyme, right? Okay. But how many times have you read these like money gurus or these like finance bros on the internet and they're saying, nah, don't worry about turning off your lights when you're not using them. Don't bother washing your plastic baggies. It doesn't really matter that much. Like, no, no. <laughs> Frugal living is all about these little practices and little ways of saving money over time snowball into something to be proud of. These little habits do make a difference, especially like the less money you make, like they really make a difference. Make your own bread and cake. Some people think it is just as cheap to buy of the baker and confectioner, but it is not half as cheap. Yes, do the math, still applies today. If someone else is putting their time and effort and expertise into making something for you, you have better bet that is more expensive than for you to do it yourself. And then she goes on to say, true, it is more convenient, but those who must be economical make convenience a secondary object. Ooh, yeah, <laughs> we do like our convenience nowadays, don't we? I mean, guess back then people liked it just as much. Oh my gosh, it's like human nature hasn't changed in 200 years, shocker. <laughs> After fabric is no longer capable of being converted into garments, cut them into strips and employ the leisure time of children or servants in sewing and braiding them for doormats. Or pot plates, if you don't have like, you know, servants around to do stuff for you, uh, and you don't have like time to make really big floor mats, hot plates are fun. <laughs> Save vials and bottles. Apothecaries and grocers will give something for them. Yeah, I mean, still true. We live in Maine. Maine still has a, the uh, five cent bottle deposit, so you get five cents back for every bottle you return. Not much. But still, again, frugal habits are about the little things that add up over time. If it be practical, get a friend in the country to procure you a quantity of lard, butter, and eggs at the time they are cheapest to be put down for the winter. Yes, I talked about this in my video on saving money on fruits and vegetables. If you buy things when they're like in season, you are going to be paying the least amount for them. Especially if you can like preserve them. She talks about like put them down for the winter. Like, you know, you have your cellar eggs, you'd do the thing that you can like preserve eggs. I don't know how to do that, but I watched it on Three Rivers Homestead. So like clearly people can do it. <laughs> Ooh, here's a cool one. Have any of you tried this? Cut your lemon and orange peel into a bottle full of brandy when they are fresh and sweet. This brandy then gives a delicious flavor to all sorts of pies, puddings, and cakes. Honestly, that sounds amazing. <laughs> and it uses up all the scraps. If the tops of lettuce be cut off, it will grow up again fresh and tender and may this be kept good through the summer. Yep, works with green onions too. You just gotta like change the water pretty frequently so it doesn't like get icky. Do not let the beauty of this thing or the cheapness of that tempt you to buy unnecessary articles. Man, she would not have been a fan of the Target $5 section. Let me tell you that like beauty and cheapness combined is like the exact kind of crap trap they are setting for me right when I walk into Target. Yeah. <laughs> not one valuable friend will be gained by living beyond your means. Yes, live below your means, people. <laughs> Don't go racking up crazy amounts of debt just to impress people who aren't actually going to be true friends they're going to be more interested in the money you're spending or the lifestyle you've got than you as a person. True wisdom lies in finding out all the advantages of a situation in which we are placed instead of imagining the enjoyments of one in which we are not placed. Yeah, being content. I know that, that can be really hard. Don't go looking at what your coworkers are driving. Don't go looking at where your cousins are going on vacation. Watch out for how much social media you're consuming because it's just trying to influence you to buy more stuff and make you unhappy with where you're at. All these voices telling you what you should have instead of just being content with where you are. Totally, totally relevant advice still. Let me know in the comments which one was your favorite piece of frugal advice or if you like totally disagreed with me on any of those. Like, yeah, let's, we'll have a conversation. It'll be great. <laughs> All right, I'll end it there today, frugal friends. Bye, YouTube. Oh, bug. That was weird.